for all your prescription needs. Visit The Medicine Shop, where state-of-the-art technology sorts and fills your orders with no chance of contamination. You'll be serviced by a friendly, knowledgeable, and multilingual staff open seven days a week. Visit 31205 McClure Road, that's Elwood Plaza, at the corner of Townline and McClure, or call 604-854-5800, free home delivery, seven days a week. For me, it's been quite a learning process. Uh, at the beginning, we were trying to figure out who do we cover, uh, what shows to do, what events, where to go, how to fill our itinerary, I guess you could say. But as the months have progressed, um, the shows are coming to us now. Uh, people are starting to approach us. Um, now, when I say they approach us, uh, we've started to find we're getting sub subscribers to our YouTube channel. Uh, our Facebook channel, our page is starting to grow with uh, likes and followers. Uh, our Instagram. Uh, so make sure that if you are watching to go on your social media, find us, follow us, like us, share, comment. All of that really helps. Um, our, our purpose is, like I said, not to be right in anything. It's just to gain knowledge and share that knowledge with you. Now, something I want to share is one of my favorite uh, shows and I have to say for me it's been a lot of the street team stuff sitting on the couch interviewing somebody which is great you know it's a an environment where it's calm uh, well I'm gonna correct that I, I like to say calm but uh, you know you think uh, recording or making something is gonna be easy and we pick a nice quiet Sunday at our coffee shop uh, once we get set up we unplug everything get rid of all the noises and the first thing we noticed, and you, the viewer, definitely must have noticed this too, is the background noise. Um, as we're filming about every five, 10 minutes, a big semi truck or motorcycle drives by and it's cut, redo. So that was a learning process. And you've probably noticed that since the first few episodes, we have transitioned to not do so many couch interviews on our couch at the cafe. Um, we'll be back there again. I'm not saying we won't be, but that was a learning curve. It was literally trying to make the quality better, uh, the sound better, and we found being as a street team or on the green screen, uh, it makes it a little bit easier for us to not have those problems or uh, issues, I guess. Okay, so back to my favorite one. I say it was definitely uh, Greek days. Uh, it was the Greek festival on Broadway uh, this summer, and uh, just the way we were brought forward, we were given some, um, I wouldn't say better treatment, but it's something that they hadn't had yet. Uh, Greek Days has been going on for, as they said, about 18 years, and uh, they had a gap in between where they didn't have it, but it started way back in the 70s. And uh, nobody's really put them in the media. There, nobody's really reported on it. And then when we phoned them up and said, hey, we're a show about multiculturalism, diversity, uh, could we come in, uh, cover the event for you. The energy was amazing. Uh, the way they said, yes, uh, what do you need? How are we going to do this? So it was our first real adventure as a street team. So not sure what to pack and how to get there. But once we got there, everything just kind of flowed. You know, the energy, uh, the people, the smiles, the good weather, the setup. Um, and to mention, uh, all the extra helpers around. I mean, the people that were cooking, the host, the dignitaries that were there that spoke, uh, they all went out of their way uh, to help us in what we were doing. So it's something I've said to my team many times that uh, when you go and try and help people, help finds you. And we're helping bring people closer together and you, our audience, or other shows have literally reached out and helped us do this. So thank you very much for allowing us to do this and share in our experiences with you. Now, I'm a talker. I could sit here and talk the whole time, but uh, how about we get on uh, some of our other co-hosts uh, that have uh, hosted some episodes, share their experiences, what they thought, and uh, once we get their uh, experiences here, uh, we'll come back and talk about what we're gonna do in the next six months. You ever hosted a show before? 
Have you ever interviewed somebody before? Like before Spill Your Beans? Yeah, before Spill Your Beans. No, I was interviewed once for a class project where everything I said was just completely misquoted. It was awesome. <laughs> okay, we'll make sure to misquote you on this thing too. Now let's talk about uh, when you did the interview. How was that experience for you? When, when I interviewed, when you interviewed were, on the show. It was very, very nerve wracking. I don't think I did a very good interview at all, honestly. I was very unprepared. Okay. Well, how are you feeling right now? Are you nervous right now? No, because when I was doing that in the last interview, my full length interview, I was, it was a very serious topic. Well, it wasn't too serious, but I'm more good at the ones where I can be a goof because I can mess up and it's just like, oh, that's funny instead of like, you're holding us back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, Street team. Now you lead our street team. You're at every event. Some of us don't make it to certain events, but you're always there. Um, give me a couple street teams that you thought, wow, we did it. I didn't think we'd be able to do it or ones that you had fun at. So some that stand out. Well, I had a lot of fun at, um, we did Pride in Abbotsford and the characters you meet there. Like yeah. there was a transvestite woman and I'm not even allowed to say her name on the TV show because innuendo all the way. Okay. Now, why was that one standing out for you? Oh, well, just the characters. Like, people dress up in this very elaborate thing. And I don't know, like, sometimes when we do the street interviews, we ask people if they want to interview. A lot of people say no. When we're at Pride, literally every single person we asked said, Yes! And they were all really excited. It didn't matter who we asked. Uh, did you feel the same way about Vancouver Pride? Um, we didn't do interviews in Vancouver Pride. We um, just filmed the parade. Well, did people seem just as proud? Just as proud? Yeah, well, it's a whole different atmosphere because there was only like... There was less than 500, I'd say, in Abbotsford, where the other one was like tens of thousands, probably maybe more. Something that hasn't been on the show yet, I know it's a part of your life and your culture, um, how do we go about covering that? Buddhism. Buddhism. Well, I'm honestly not the best person to ask about Buddhism because I just kind of, I've never really talked to another Buddhist that takes Buddhism seriously. I kind of just, I feel like I go and I read books and I absorb the different philosophies and I just decide which ones I like and then that becomes Buddhism to me. Were you interviewed by one of our guest hosts as well? Yeah. What was the deal with the fish going across the screen? What is your favorite animal? My favorite animal? My favorite, well, it's not really an animal, but fish. I love fish. Uh, is there a, a specific type of fish? Mm, jellyfish. <laughs> Why? I don't know, they're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, that, that particular mood I was in, I was just really into fish. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't, not anymore? No, well, I, I do like fish. Although my favorite fish has changed, I now really like salmon. They taste better than jellyfish. I think. I've never eaten a jellyfish. What's with papaya? Papaya? What is papaya? I don't know. What is papaya? Oh. You were talking to some guy at, <laughs> at Fusion Fest. All right. So what is this papaya salad? So what is your favorite Laotian food? Uh, favorite Laotian food is uh, it's, uh, sour papaya. Sour. sour papaya. Sour papaya? Yeah. OK, what is that? You can see in the Thai restaurant, they have sour papaya, you know? Oh, okay. So is it so like... Some people say uh, uh, papaya salad. Papaya salad. And what's in it? Uh, it's a papaya. Okay. <laughs> papaya. Okay, I pronounced salad right. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it was papaya. Except for me in the moment. Oh, so you're admitting to that now. I, I was I legitimately didn't know what he was saying until after the cameras were done. <laughs> like someone I think it was Ish walked up to me and said, 
You were saying papaya. And I'm like, ah! Oh. The whole idea of interviewing and being interviewed. Does that scare you? I like being interviewed, and I, 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 I it depends on this topic. Yeah. If it's a serious topic where it's not really acceptable to make a lot of jokes and be kind of goofy, it's not your thing. It's not my thing. I just kind of get. I feel like I'm ruining it when I'm messing up a lot. Like I can mess up, and it's it's kind of funny. Like, oh look at that guy. He no. doesn't know how to even do whatever it is we're doing here. <laughs> David mentioned something, and uh, what I liked about his was he doesn't want to take part of an interview where he has to be serious. Um, life is always serious. We're constantly trying to pay our bills, make ends meet, um, live up to expectations that might be unrealistic, and we're always putting pressures on ourselves. And our, our team has a little bit of everything. I mean, we have some athletes, we have some scholars, uh, different backgrounds, uh, we have some very serious people, and we have some people that just like to have fun. Learn to have some fun. You know, uh, when David actually said, uh, I don't want to ruin an interview, um, I don't think he would ruin an interview. I think he would give us a perspective that most of us wouldn't be able to share. Uh, on the other hand, uh, he wouldn't be able to get in deep detail uh, about some of the things we'd like to cover. Uh, so I know he said you probably don't see him on camera or doing those interviews, but I hope he's wrong. I hope we can get him on our couch doing a couple more of those interviews. So. Thanks, David. What would you like to see you're going to be on the couch again in the future or on the street team? Uh, what sort of events that would you like to host? I would really like to go to more fun events. Like, there's a lot of, like, cons. I don't want to say the names of any of them, but, like, a lot of fun ones with, like, nerd culture and things like that, or Asian culture. Or I'd also love, I'd love to go to a music event and do that kind of thing. If any of you in the audience are hosting events such as those, contact us, because we want to be there. Beautiful. That was the most elegant thing I've ever said on this show. <laughs> and speaking of Asians, here comes Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, David being serious and literal. Now, if you've never met him, you have to meet him. So as he was saying, you have an event, call us out. You get to meet David, all right? And the Asian friend he was introducing you to, sorry for the choice of words, but it's Nick. You've seen him on a couple episodes. You've seen him on our street team. Um, he makes us smarter, I have to say that. Um, sometimes I feel like I don't do enough when I see him and how he works. So uh, without me, pumping him up anymore, why don't we just get him on camera? Okay, well, thanks for that intro, David. But, uh, yeah, I'm Nick. Uh, it's been fun hosting and um, going to all the events, right? So, uh, one of the events, I remember, uh, it's uh, we brought on Peony and Taylor for on the Seven Day Ring project. And so, their whole um, non-profit is predicated on uh, raising money for children uh, or girls in Africa that want to uh, that need help or support in uh, going to school. So that was pretty cool and that's the reason why I love the show. It's because we have the chance to actually um, offer people or um, communities help. And so, uh, and that's by um, raising awareness and um, educating people because a lot of the times uh, Fear is based on lack of knowledge. Um, I've overheard Jazz say that many times, but uh, it's true. Um, and the reason why they have the fear is because they don't know the people and then so they form assumptions. And so to get rid of the fear, you need to educate people and get them to kind of, um, kind of teach them so they know a little bit more. And that way they realize that deep down everyone else is um, everyone else is the same deep down <coughs> excuse me yeah so everyone's the same deep down but uh, yeah that's uh, I guess assuming they're different makes us fear them I guess so yeah 
and uh, I don't know. I'm just a huge believer that everyone, everyone has the same core characteristics. Everyone's the same. Everyone really cares about each other underneath all the uh, um, all the assumptions that everyone else makes. All the stereotypes. How do you stay motivated? You know, I'm gonna plug this. You're working a day job. You have a side business. You're a social butterfly because you're constantly trying to meet with friends and I know you put out events and don't show up because you're busy working. <laughs> so where do you get this drive uh, to just plug away and work? Are you, is this for today? Is this for tomorrow? Is this somebody's put you up or you're trying to live up to somebody's expectations or is this for you? I don't know honestly. Um, the motivation I have, it really does come within me. I don't know if it's something I, I need to prove or want to do or accomplish in life. But uh, um, I don't find it that hard to motivate myself and I think it's because I might be built uh, or um, be lucky genetically or whatever because I actually I find joy in, in working and, and I like the, the hustle or the grind and that, that kind of stuff. But what really motivates me is, um, and this goes back to genetics, because not a lot of people are like me in the way where um, I just have such a deep appreciation or gratitude for everything in life. And I think that's what, when you break down everything, um, that's what I have and I don't know the reason for it. And I don't know what the cause is, whether it's my upbringing or um, yeah, my DNA, but uh, I know that's in the core of everything I do and when I look at people all I see is good which could be a little naive sometimes but um, I've learned kind of to adjust for that because uh, yeah um, I think it's a lot of it is I believe in myself and I have that kind of yeah, the drive to to make a make a difference, make a change, and I've always wanted to impact the world in a way where I improve or enhance people's lives. It's a genuine caring nature. You care about your fellow human beings, your fellow citizens, your neighbors, your family, um, and when you care, you want to make their lives better. And you do it for our team. I remember today, you're sitting there working hard, plugging away. David was stuck on something and you went out of your way, came and just wanted to work, like go, 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 right? And you just do it. You just, you don't ask questions, you just do it. I know I noticed that even with us. Hey, Nick, I need this for this site. And you're like, hey, can you wait two minutes? I'm like, no, Nick, that could wait two days. I'm just throwing that at you. <laughs> uh, but you're right there on the spot, ready to help, right? And that's, that's your nature, right? Uh, street team. I know you fusion. You were there. Greek fest. You right. were there. Honestly, none of the no, none of the events really stick out to me. No. And uh, no, I mean it was fun. Um, none of them do. But I, I think I more enjoyed the interviews. To be honest. Yeah, and like and uh, yeah, actually, to be honest, I don't know if I really want to be um, still be the host, but because. Uh, because the way, I don't know, it's, it's weird because my mind works in such a weird, like, kind of like an ADD kind of way where it's hard to, it's hard to have a streamlined kind of idea because my mind bounces around everything. So while they're talking, talking about this certain topic, I'll, I'll pick out some totally arbitrary different thing to talk about because my mind is just curious all of a sudden about that one thing. Um, but what I do like doing, I feel like I'm very much like a connector and like making connections out there and getting people on the show that have kind of the same vision or the same dreams that we do and because I think uh, in that way um, when you have that synergy with people that are like-minded and have the same vision as you you can build something so much bigger than just doing something on your own and so I think yeah so like, reach out to reaching out people right and now. so yeah, exactly. Like if you have the if you have the same vision as us, if you want to create this unity in our world, and you want to make a change or make a difference and impact on people's lives, and you know a way or you know someone, reach out to us. We're always open, and we'll talk with you, set something up, and this could really benefit both of us and the whole world. And that's our vision, really, to to make an impact in the world and. Make a, 
make ourselves uni uni united. Yeah, I like that. But yeah. yeah. See, even there, I can see the wheels are turning. You went to a different thought. You wanted to finish this one, but you wanted to start talking about the other one. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. So, right. okay. so I'm good at asking questions, but not good at... Well, I'm okay at hosting. Also, one thing, I think is that you, there's a certain talent you need when you're hosting and when you're asking questions, because there's some questions that actually really spark people's imaginations and get them um, really engaged. And that does take uh, skill. But... Uh, Something I don't really like, uh, I like asking questions on things I especially I don't know, but I don't like, uh, like it gets harder to ask detailed questions because there's gonna, you have to know a little bit about that subject and um, so I'm great at asking lots of different questions and filling in my void of knowledge, but I don't necessarily, I don't like talking about things I don't know completely and to like the best of my abilities, I guess. That was different. Um, that's our team, two members that have hosted. And uh, the plan is to get everybody in, but it looks like it's going to be time for this episode already. Uh, so what we're going to do is we'll get the other two guest hosts uh, on our next episode. And I'm going to slightly recap a little bit of uh, what these guys talked about. It reminds me of why we're a team and why we work in such a big group. And I took some notes here. So if it looks like I'm reading, it's because I am. And I don't want to miss some of these things. And um, something that Nick said uh, that really hit me, and it was, um, like he said, he can't ask an interview because when somebody says something, he's got other thoughts and questions in his mind and he doesn't keep the flow. But one thing he said is, we're all connected. Now, I'm going to go deeper than that. I, when we're all connected, I think the basic traits of all of us are the same. Well, I won't say traits. Uh, I'll say a desire. Now, another team member and I, Ish, were having a conversation about uh, Buddhism and how Buddha says that uh, the all our own unhappiness is from our own desires. And then we went deeper into asking, is like, well, what kind of a life would it be without any sort of desires or wants or hopes or goals or? Um, and then we broke it down even further and realized we all basically want or need the same things. And that is acceptance, companionship, uh, some love and respect. And you don't have to uh, like the things I do or like the choices I make in life. But if you like me as a person, uh, then you can help me grow, help me learn, help me change. And then every time we see a stranger, if we think of them as the same way that they're just looking for acceptance they're just looking for a way to fit in um, maybe be one of the popular people for a bit and have their opinions noticed and listened to um, make them feel real make them feel important make them feel wanted and, and so when you said Nick um, we're all connected uh, that is definitely why we do what we do is to let our audience yourselves uh, even our team and people that we deal with know that we are connected on a way deeper level than just this conversation here and then um, last but not least uh, of Nick's comment was believe in yourself right that's why he's able to do all these different things that's why he's able to go and try this new business try this new venture um, and if you have questions ask them. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a teacher or a family member. Uh, talk to a friend. Talk to a stranger who's in the same field as you would like to go. Uh, they'll give you a more honest, genuine opinion because hopefully they don't have a prejudice or stereotypical view of who you already are. Um, so that's the key, I think, is asking the right questions, uh, being open and willingly letting people know that you don't know and you will find out by asking. Um, so now I'm reaching out. I know there's uh, two more people you're going to uh, hear about their experiences on the show. Uh, right now, I'm going to leave it with uh, myself, David, and Nick. And uh, tune in next week for the other half of our half-year episode.